Alors, un autre axe majeur de la prochaine phase du projet Dialogue McGill, euh, c'est de consolider les acquis euh, des cours de formation linguistique et de raffiner euh, les connaissances. Dans cette perspective, les personnes que vous allez maintenant entendre euh, travaillent déjà dans ce sens en organisant pour les professionnels de la santé et des services sociaux des occasions de converser avec la communauté d'expression anglaise. Une des différentes façons possibles d'amener les professionnels de la santé à gagner de l'assurance euh, et d'organiser de telles séances. Certains d'entre vous l'avez peut-être envisagé ou même tenté avec plus ou moins de succès. Nous vous proposons un exemple qui marche et qui pourrait donc vous inspirer. Euh, pour aller jusqu'au bout de la réflexion, après la présentation que vous allez entendre, qui va durer à peu près euh, 20 minutes, il y aura une période de questions. Oh, il y aura une période de questions. Euh, et puis une période de discussion en petits groupes qui sera suivie d'une mise en commun. Uh, so I'll invite you uh, to uh, welcome uh, to uh, the front of the room. Uh, Emily Bergeron, agent de planification et programmation et recherche au CIS Montérégie Centre. Uh, Catherine Quast, uh, executive director uh, ARC Community Network. Robin Graham, project coordinator ARC Community Network. And Cynthia Lachance, a volunteer <laughs> from the same community network. Hello, um, so. I don't know how you've divided the time uh, between yourselves, but collectively, you have about 20 minutes. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Morning. Happy Friday. Uh, I love the title of this slide, Building Confidence. At least I love the first two words, Building Confidence. <clears throat> Very appropriate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead with a little tiny story about how our lunch, laugh, and learn has come to be. <clears throat> uh, and very briefly. So, moi, je viens des États. Je suis très heureuse que uh, je parle français. Alors, uh, that's just about it for right now. <laughs> uh, I can remember once upon a time when I met my uh, répondant, Emily, the first question, you know, the first time I met her, I think my legs were shaking. Right? I, didn't, I don't practice using my French often enough. Uh, so the trembling, shaking that you're seeing now is not parce que mon français, c'est vraiment parce que je suis un peu nervous, okay? <laughs> um, <clears throat> the lunch and learns uh, in the Monteregie Centre area uh, started about two years ago. It seems to me longer than that, but it's about two years ago that we started the conversation around that. Uh, I recall that uh, ARC, the Assistance uh, Referral Center for Health and Social Services, we had the McGill Project, and we had one of the activities was to do a lunch and learn, to hang out with health professionals just chatting in English. Alors, le lui donne une occasion de pratiquer le, le, le compétence. Excusez-moi. <clears throat> It was in my work plan. But somehow, similar to a researcher who does research but doesn't apply it, kind of, this, I had a moment quite like that. I'm very far from a researcher. I went to my CLC, my CLSC, my local CLSC, with my sister. Elle vient des États aussi. By elle, elle parle pas le français. She had to have a dressing changed on her arm, and also a, an antibiotic a ball, like a change of some sort. The nurse who was, uh, was helping my sister with the, with, the, uh, with the dressing, wow, she made such an incredible effort to speak English. I mean, clearly my sister doesn't speak French at all. And, and, and this nurse made such a huge effort. Puis ça, c'est le moment magique pour moi. J'ai juste jump in the conversation and I did the a translation. Like, oh yeah, she's, this is how long it's been bleeding. It needs this, it needs that. And the French, prof the, the health professional was amazed. She's like, you're English. But you speak French. I'm like, yeah, I know, isn't that great? We got into this conversation about how it would be nice to have her have the opportunity just pour pratiquer l'anglais parce qu'il y a vraiment pas un autre moment. Alors, ça, c'est juste une petite uh, story that I made a little bit long. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to next hand this over to, um, to my colleague Robin Graham, who will walk through how we've assembled uh, the uh, the, the, the uh, activity, who the partners are, why this is important. Uh, just before we get started, next slide. Okay, everybody loves PowerPoints, right? Okay, I did that. Okay, I didn't do that. You did. Okay, the image. I, I do want to share something about the image that's here, <clears throat> the cartoon. You'll first of all pay really careful attention on slide number, <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you because there's a little change in here. 
However, our presentation will be given in accordance with how the cartoon characters are laid out. It's a process. We're going to start with building that confidence, the story I had talked to you about, having the application, making sure that we can get it done. We're going to move through the next pieces of the process. And if I'm really excellent at what I do, I'll be able to point out where we are in the process. So right now, we're right at the beginning. You got two people called ARC. Now I'm going to hand it on over. <laughs> is, it, is it working, or do I need to stand Hello? it up? It's working? OK. <laughs> do you want the pointer? OK, so um, Catherine told you that she had that great idea about uh, Lunch and Learn, so she came to see me uh, with that fabulous idea. And uh, the project was in line with our responsibilities uh, regarding access to services in English in the CIS. Um, so there, we had gold, so goal. Oh, no, it's supposed to be Catherine talking about the. OK, so. OK, go ahead. We'll go ahead. You can, uh, the other slide, uh, Robin. No, the other one. You're, you're a tricky <laughs> So we're there. <laughs> okay, so uh, our goal was to sensitize employees to the reality of English speaking population, uh, to facilitate the development of linguistic competencies, and to encourage employees to speak in English uh, with English speaking people, like uh, Catherine told. Uh, before. Uh, so together we built the pro project and uh, with the SIS we started a um, pilot project uh, of the Lunch and Learn. I think it's your turn. So now we're uh, down there. <laughs> so here is where we talked about the project and uh, <laughs> made the pilot one and here uh, we're there now. Arc's responsibilities, uh, I just wanted to tell you too for the, uh, the pilot project we did last year, I was the first one to volunteer for this project. Um, I think it's a great initiative. Uh, I, I actually did it off of work time because I wanted to you know, kind of hang out with the people. I wanted to get to know who these people are that work in the hospital. Um, and it was, a, it was a great opportunity for me to be able to, uh, to build this with Emily, actually, to provide the materials, to see what, you know, really to get the feedback from everybody. Um, and uh, anyway, so ARC's responsibilities are to prepare the materials, recruit the volunteers, follow up with the volunteers, and provide support and backup if needed. So um, <clears throat> uh, if ever there's a volunteer who is unable to attend a session, ARC is responsible for filling that position, whether it be by finding another volunteer or uh, filling in, in our, uh, ourselves. Uh, we've also invested in some volunteer management training so that we're better equipped to handle these responsibilities. Uh, so volunteer recruitment. Uh, our main successful avenue for promotion of the volunteer position has been through community partners. Uh, each person who has applied as a conversation monitor has been linked to us through another organization. Uh, the interview process is by telephone. Uh, we require the volunteer to be fluent in English, but they must also have conversa conversational French skills, uh, especially necessary for the beginner group, uh, as we have two different groups. We have an, a beginner group and an intermediate group. Uh, <clears throat> for the screening process, we have a link with the volunteer office at the Shalom Wen Hospital, uh, and they actually do a criminal record check on everybody, and um, they provide the volunteers with free parking which is a very good incentive. Um, so you'll notice in the slide that uh, last year we started with one volunteer, and uh, now we're up to three in our last session in the fall. We had three volunteers. So the volunteer's role. Um, as this is not an English course, we don't require any English teachers for the background. Uh, the skills we ask for are just quite straightforward, um, positive, friendly person, that has the ability to lead a group uh, who has prior experience um, uh, in facilitation um, and also communicate effectively in English. Uh, the goal is really to provide health professionals with a comfortable informal setting uh, where they can practice their English skills and just uh, simply not be judged. So the volunteer must be available one, one lunch hour per week for six consecutive weeks 
And uh, we actually had many people apply uh, from the community, which is great. There's a lot of interest in this. Um, so now we have a bank of volunteers who we can call if ever uh, we need a volunteer. Um, but our ideal situation is to have volunteers return with us if they like it. Uh, this way we build a, a trust relationship um, and the volunteers actually become rather autonomous, which requires less supervision uh, on our part, which is great because it's less work. Um, so now we are here. Uh, my part of the job, um, my responsibility in the CIS is uh, to help um, ARC, and with ARC we build up the material for um, the lunch and learn, so um, later we'll talk about it. Um, I'm more in charge of the logistic inside the CIS, so I'm the one reserving the room, I'm the one, the rooms. Uh, I'm the one recruiting the participants, um, and I'll talk about our strategy later. Uh, I'm doing the follow-up with the participants, like sending email if there's a room change, or um, contacting them if they don't show uh, often. Um, and I'll, I also assist the volunteers during meeting. Not all the meetings, but some of them. I'm there uh, at the first meeting to introduce the project and uh, talk about the guidelines. Mm -hmm. Is it the one? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm, la I'm there at the last meeting to uh, recognize the work that was done uh, from the volunteer part and also from the participant part. And uh, during the last meeting, I also uh, collect the feedback. Um, so for the recruitment, oh, sorry. <laughs> for the recruitment strategy, um, actually, uh, we, I need to tell you that we're only doing it at one hospital, Hôpital Charlemagne, because we, we don't have the, um, the main d'oeuvre to do the everything, human the human resources to do, uh, to do it in other parts, but we're planning to expand it. But we're doing it at uh, the Hôpital Charlemagne because uh, there's a lot of English-speaking uh, patients, and also because uh, there's uh, many employees, so it's easy to recruit. So uh, basically to recruit, we uh, only send a memo, and there's a lot of people um, asking us to participate. Um, last time we had a waiting list, so we needed to open another group, mm -hmm. a big waiting list. <laughs> we had three. Well, for us. <laughs> we had, it, we had yeah, three groups. An extra 15 people, so we needed to open another uh, group. Um, so for the recruitment strategy, like I told you, we're sending a memo and it works really well, and it's only one memo. So I take the, I take the registr registrations. And um, priority is giving to um, people that have already participated to uh, the first uh, lunch and learns because it's uh, the way we do it. I think we didn't talk about it, but it's um, six <laughs> sessions, like six, six consecutive weeks. Um, so it's not that much, but we want to make sure people attend to the courses because of life events and things like that. So we. We do it by six weeks um, intervals. intervals, but they can um, subscribe, subscribe, register again if they'd like. So we give a priority to them so they have the, the opportunity to continue their learning. Uh, we also uh, send a special uh, memo to the ones that are in the McGill program to ask them if they want to um, make a learning program, to ask them if they want to practice uh, their English with us. And uh, we uh, prioritize employees that work uh, with the clientele because there's people that are interested because their work is to work with um, equipment and they work with um, US and uh, Ontario people that speak only in English, but they're not prioritized because our goal is uh, to make sure we have access to services. But if there's space, they're welcome. Um, for the strategy, uh, we decided to do overbooking because uh, not everybody shows up at every meeting because it's uh, on their uh, lunch hour. It's a volunteer thing. Uh, is it a volunteer thing? Yeah. yeah, it's on their time. So sometimes there's personal th personal um, reasons and work-related reasons too. Mm -hmm. So we're overbooking. We're registering uh, 15 people per um, lunch and learn session. 
And uh, usually about eight participants show up. So that's what we're aiming because uh, 15 people are uh, hard to manage. <laughs> During, we only have one hour. <laughs> yeah, we only have one hour. Yeah. And um, that's it. Yeah, I just wanted to tell you that um, we have an increased demand. Uh, in the winter, it was the winter 2017, it was a pilot that Robin was animating and we had uh, five participants. In the spring, we had two groups of 20 participants, two group, one beginner and one intermediate. And in the fall uh, 2017, there were a true group, two groups, one beginner and two intermediate because we had a lot of registration for the intermediate one. Okay. Okay, so um, in terms of materials, uh, Emily and I have actually recently put together a, a volunteer package um, including icebreaker activities, conversation ideas, and relevant vocabulary uh, applicable to health and social services. Uh, yeah, here's our binder if anybody wants to take a look after. Um, sure. It's heavy. <laughs> Uh, we also have included the Health Passport, uh, which was originally created by a community organization uh, in Thetford Mines, MCDC, which is a pocket reference guide that uh, includes helpful words and phrases in both English and French. Um, uh, and this was brought to us, uh, to our attention, because a lot of health professionals would, you know, can use it with their patients or vice versa. The, the, the population can also take it with them to the, to the doctor. Um, in our last planning session in January, uh, we included Cynthia, which is, who is a very dedicated volunteer um, with us, and uh, she, we asked her for her input as well. And um, she brought to our attention that uh, many of the volunteers, it would be nice for them to have some sort of formal recognition for this. So uh, Emily is actually going to be promoting this through the, uh, the CIS uh, newsletter, the e-bulletin. Um, so the participants will be featured uh, throughout the CIS as uh, some sort of recognition. Um, that's about it for that. Okay. Okay. Hi. Everybody hear me okay? And I'm the little figure at the bottom there, volunteer, and I love doing it. My name is Cynthia Lachance. And I've been the uh, beginners uh, group facilitator since the spring of 2017. I'm retired, I have a lot of time, and I love meeting new people. I've enjoyed uh, teaching, and it's leading, really. Mm -hmm. 14 classes since the spring of 2017 at the Charles Lemoyne Hospital in Greenfield Park. And I volunteer my time because I find it important that Francophone hospital personnel become comfortable serving English-speaking clients in a professional capacity. I believe it's a positive step toward increasing access to better health care for everyone. Over the course of these lessons, I have personally seen my students gain confidence and ability in expressing themselves in English. I think the key to the success of this program is the simplicity and casual setting. Forget copy books and exams. With beginner students, I have found it incredibly useful that these lessons take place during lunchtime. And everybody wants a break at lunchtime and they bring their lunch and so forth. For example, I ask uh, the students to describe what they ate for breakfast or what department of the hospital they work in, or their plans for the weekend. Those are subjects, uh, prompt subjects. You may be skeptical, but I can attest that this casual approach builds confidence and allows beginners to take risks and grow. In fact, during the final lessons, they're quite independent. The students have come to know one another and engage in pretty fluent English everyday conversations all by themselves without any prompting from me. And while grappling with verb tenses can be a tall order for anyone, 
<laughs> the participants leave the lunch lessons with renewed confidence, and they speak with clients and colleagues in English. All in all, it's been a rewarding experience for me in many ways, and I thank the directors of the Assistance and Referral Centre for their innovative program and that they've placed their trust in me as a volunteer. I can attest definitely to the success of this program. And by the way, the next session starts February 20th. <laughs> yes. Thank you. If you want to resist it. Thank you, Cynthia. Oops. Um, we also uh, got comments from the participants. Uh, I don't know if you want, if you want to read them. But basically, uh, they're really happy to uh, participate. They like the um, they like the event by itself, and they also appreciate that they're not shy anymore to speak with with English speaking uh, patients or clients because uh, they 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 break break the ice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> they break the ice, and um, yeah, some of them are really happy to tell tell uh, Cynthia and the uh, other volunteer at each time, hey, I spoke to someone in English this week, I was able to do so. Uh, and um, yeah, everyone coming from, we had one participant from uh, CHSLD um, that didn't speak English at all, mm -hmm. but uh, he learned a bit and now he can do chat, he can chat with the patients. He, he cannot offer services, but it's in this, CHSLD, so uh, it's like daily um, encounters, mm -hmm. so it, it's a good thing for, uh, it's an improvement. Yeah. Also, just a, just a quick mention, um, Cynthia has coined this as the uh, lunch, laugh and learn. Yeah. We, we had called it lunch and learn at the beginning, but now we call it lunch, laugh and learn. Because we do laugh and have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, oh yeah, problem. okay. So the benefits, uh, this initiative really uh, benefits everybody. Um, we have found that this is actually a relatively easy way for the CIS and for ARC to work together to respond to the increasing need of bilingual health professionals and to provide better access to health and social services for the English speaking community. We would really like to see this collaboration continue and grow in the future. Can you just talk about all the benefits? <laughs> so the benefits for CIS and for ARC are to accomplish their responsibilities, uh, better respond to the English-speaking community needs. Uh, the volunteers have a chance to help uh, the community, and also they get recognition. Uh, participants, uh, it increases confidence and capacities. Um, it increases their willingness to speak in English when it's needed. Um, and for the English community as a whole, uh, they feel welcomed when they come in to, to seek services um, and access to services in their preferred language. Um, while doing the Lunch and Learns, we had uh, challenges. <laughs> mm. uh, it's time consuming. Uh, up to now, I'm spending only uh, an hour and a half per week, but it's still an, an hour and a half. But we cannot expand because I would need to spend more time and I have other projects. So we're looking at what we can do. Uh, one of the um, solution for that is getting more uh, our, our volunteers more autonomous, like Cynthia. She can do everything by herself, and that's fine. I'm just there to support her if needed. <laughs> and um, yeah, we're we're trying to get our volunteer autonomous and giving them tools to uh, to be so. Um, yeah, and we're looking to have more time allocated to that project because it, it's working. Uh, for attendance, we had problem with attendance because uh, there's a lot of um, events in the um, employees' lives. So we decided to overbook to make sure that at least eight people would show up. Uh, we got more structured sessions because we think people will come again and again if we make more games and things that are really interesting for them. Uh, we also, like Robin said, ta um, decided to put in place other um, strategies to valorize the participants. We have certificates um, 
certificate of recognition. Yeah. yeah. Well, participation. Um, yeah, yeah. Of participation that we give them at the end. Sorry. Okay. Uh, well, it's it's uh, near uh, the end. And um, yeah, and we'll uh, publicize it in the journal, and uh, that's it. And we have future projects. We want to op open other uh, groups in other locations, and uh, we want to uh, look for individual learning opportunities, like to pair people together. And the Estri uh, is already doing that, so we talked about it uh, yesterday. So we'll look uh, to for towards that. So that's it. We're done. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.